Live from the Orion Shine Studios, located behind the train tracks off West 4th Avenue, it's time once again for the Brony Book Club with Samuel, Pav... Oh, wait, Pav's not here. Roy and our special guest, First Lord of Alera, Claudius Caesar. Thank you for pronouncing that correctly. Almost nobody gets that right the first time. <laughs> you don't? Oh, I guess people don't know their own. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, then. For those of you who do not know, Claudius Caesar is the author of Ditsy Do's Dismally Derpy Day which is a mouthful. I am actually rather impressed that you said that as fast as you did. Hey, but, hey, it's what I do. And you're not the one with a speech impediment. <laughs> <laughs> and this week we'll be discussing the one and the only, the incomparable Derpy Who's, the largest meme, not only of our fandom, but of any fandom in the last couple of years, I'd say. Quite possibly. We, our, our meme's so big it got into the actual show. Well, and yeah, well, yeah, actually, I was actually about to say that. Now that I think of it, I'm pretty sure yeah, that hasn't happened. But I talk faster so. than you. Yeah, well, jerk. Oh. <laughs> All right, then. As it happens every week, we will interview our special guest, Claudius, first. Mr. Claudius, are you ready for these questions? Uh, ready as I'm going to be. All right. First one. What is your favorite tag? Um... Um, in terms of, of uh, story content, you mean? Yes. Um, ooh, that is a tough choice. Um, probably depends on my mood, but mm, um, I think I go with adventure, honestly. Mm. Um, uh, one of the just the coolest uh, fix that I've uh, that I've encountered is uh, the Mastara's Little Ponies: Friendship Is Adventuring. Which basically drops Equestria right into the middle of a D and D campaign world, and uh, throws the ponies up against all kinds of of, uh, of different D and D adventuring tropes. And mm-hmm. um, I've got an in progress adventure style fic of my own that I'm working on. And mm-hmm. uh, I, um, depending on my mood, um, I can definitely go for you know the cute stories and the shipping definitely if it's you know reasonably well done shipping mm-hmm. but yeah <laughs> um but uh um uh, but seeing the ponies get thrown into some kind of uh um desperate situation where it's like oh horse apples how are we going to get out of this um i love reading that kind of thing hmm. yeah it's funny i think when the show started i was uh very I, I've mentioned often how I didn't like Adventure Fix that much, and I think that was because at the time, all the ones I'd run into were those huge epic length, um, and all of the huge epic length, I noticed I was talking to another author, we'll talk about it later, um, we were talking about it, and I noticed, is it just me, is there a glut of Adventure Fix that are one pony gets injured, and another group of the main six go off on this huge epic quest in order to help them. Like, through Mm. distant lands and stuff. Because I've seen at least ten adventure fix like that. Really? And I think the... I don't think the premise is bad on its own, but when I keep seeing them, and I keep starting to read them and getting bored, I'm just less and less interested every time. Because there's... I, I don't think there's that... It's a framework that you can build upon, but I don't think it's as good a framework as some other stories have. So, yeah. I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, I think every genre is going to have cliches that it's easy to fall back onto. But I think with adventure in particular, I think the risk there is that a lot of us have been reading or watching uh, uh, um, adventure stories without ponies for mm. uh, for years before getting into, in, into the show. So we're more overexposed to those cliches than we are the standard cliches of uh, um, cute or uh, pastoral stories or or shipping stories. Like, mm-hmm. um, uh, like if you haven't read a lot of, of romance novels, for example, you're probably not going to be well-versed in, in uh, shipping cliches. Um, yeah. So I think it's... Every genre is going to have that problem, but it's more obvious with adventure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I probably agree. Though, I, yeah, like I say, my, my pants change is becoming one of my favorites. It's become my favorite to write personally because I think I like doing. I'm heavily influenced by Jim Butcher, and the only way you can write like him is if you write adventure. You know, yeah, my, like uh, my love for Jim Butcher is undying. 
Yes! <laughs> Sam is on small favor at the moment. Yes. Oh, so no spoilers past it. Right. Um, I still need to get through uh, Ghost Story myself. Oh. Um, but have you right. read the Dresden Files crossover fix by... The Philly Scuba Diver was our second guest ever. Right. First and... one I was on the show for. Yes, uh, and... First fix Sam had to read for the show, and it's how he got into Dresden Files. Yeah, I, I loved it so much, I really wanted to read awesome. the books. So, uh, do you keep up with False Masks? Okay. Uh, false Masks, um, I think I might be a couple chapters behind. Um, oh. I'm, I'm kind of behind on reading a lot of fanfic, unfortunately, um, just because uh, uh, um, I've had uh, um, some real life in complications of uh, those moving to, to a different states, starting new jobs. So I haven't had as much time, mm. uh, but I am loving it. He actually has a southern accent. Okay. Um, yeah, like we were, we were like, "Are you Jim Butcher?" And they started talking. We're like, "No, you're not Jim Butcher." <laughs> right. Yeah, there's a conspiracy theory that uh, uh, psychic scuba diver is actually like an alias of Jim Butcher because just the stories are just that good. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Right. So where were we? Oh, uh, next question. What is your least favorite tag? Not necessarily what you say is the worst, just what's your least favorite. Least favorite would be Grimdark. Mm. Um, I just... I really don't feel like it meshes well with ponies, at least not in a way that I enjoy. Um, I've heard incredible things about Fallout Equestria, but I've been incredibly reluctant to actually get into it just because of how dark it sounds like it is. Hmm. And I realize this may sound a bit hypocritical considering the antagonist of the adventure fic I'm currently in progress and that I mentioned earlier. The antagonist of that story is um, Cthulhu. <laughs> oh, wow. But, uh, 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 but that's really more of an adventure fic with the idea of uh, um, 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 horror in in the style of those stories, which actually exist in the in that universe in that story, are mm-hmm. kind of an overly dark exaggeration of the truth, and they're starting to realize that there is hope and that this can be defeated. And it's not necessarily, you know, the end of the world. So it's it's got some dark themes. I feel like I'm unfairly chilling my own stories here, but I'm trying to make a point. <laughs> um, um, I was going for some dark-ish themes, but keeping a very clear undercurrent of hope. And when stories don't have that, or if the hope is is really hard to see, um, I just have a really hard time enjoying it. It's the same okay. reason. I, it's the same reason I am never in my life going to read or watch The Road because I can't really deal with that, even when there's not ponies involved. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a chance, but everything I'm seeing is not something I, I actually. I'm kind of similar. I don't enjoy Grimdark in general, like. Um, but the odd thing is, I love me and Sam love Fall of Equestria, hmm. and I would say basically we just described the that hope being what you need. I would say Fall of Equestria definitely has that. Amen to say that. <laughs> it is a... It is... I, I, was, I, I kind of come back to this. It's the Madoka Magica of, <laughs> of My Old Pony Fix. It's, oh I, man, it's so dark. And then you're like, oh, the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, I have not actually yeah. seen that series, so that isn't a comparison that helps me much. Okay. But, Recommended but, if you get a chance. The point right. being that Fall of Equestria is very... It, it's, okay. it is about finding hope. And oftentimes right. it is about finding hope in places where it's really hard to find it, but it is always there, and it's always working toward it. So right. recommend it if you are okay with reading something for the next long while. <laughs> okay. So good. I, I'm not making promises, but I might give it a shot. Well, Sam's job will be done if, he, if that happens. Uh, yep, pretty much. That's, like I said, oh, well, nice. easily my favorite fix, so I, I really yeah. loved it. <laughs> when I feel up to it, I'll... I'll uh, check out the first chapter and uh, see how how far I get. Okay, that works. All right. So uh, next question: What is your favorite part of Ditsy Do's Dismally Derpy Day? Ooh, um, her favorite aspect of it, where not necessarily like a part of the story. Scene, yeah. What oh. do you say? 
um, um, so you mean like a, um, um, a, th- a a thematic element rather than a particular moment or scene? Yeah. Well, not even just a thematic element, like uh, maybe how you did the dialogue, or maybe how the characters oh. turned out, or or maybe a particular scene if you want. You know, just it could be your um, favorite thing about the thing. I think it would probably be the interaction between Ditsy and Big Macintosh. Mm. That was pretty fun to write. I'm kind of um, I'm kind of proud about some of the background building I came up with for the character, like. Uh, coming up with the story behind both the nickname and uh, the cutie mark and special talent. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. That's good. Um, um, in fact, part of that was inspired by a really adorable piece of fan art I saw of uh, Ditsy chasing a butterfly. Um, so I basically described that event in the scene where she's walking with the path to a flesh eyes house and worked into that the description of, of how she... Uh, perceives uh, uh, the air currents. Um, um, so, as far as developing the character, um, um, I'm particularly proud of, of uh, coming up with those. But for the story, I really like the interaction between her and her and, and Big Mac because she's this kind of socially awkward, not kind of perceptive about other ponies, kind of, you know, um, a little dorky, and, you know, um, I say this with help, because honestly, there's a fair bit of of myself written into that portrayal of of Ditsy, and, mm-hmm. and you know, so, so she's just kind of, just sort of a little clueless and not very perceptive about other ponies, and really kind of socially awkward, and then there's uh, 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 there's Big Mac, who's, who's you know this big, strong hunk. He's you know the total, uh, strong, silent type, um, and um, um, and, and she looks at him uh, and just thinks, oh yeah, but hmm. he's also kind of shy and a little awkward and not very good about being direct um, about um, about his interest. And they both sort of kind of uh, fumble around each other sort of adorably. And I just, just kind of liked how, how that all came out. And especially mm-hmm. with uh, with him just finally going, all right, that that is enough. You people need to <laughs> just need to shut up and be quiet and give her the rest he needs. And it was like, and, and, uh, um, uh, just, just, just totally just going in, in, in into, uh, like, you know, guardian form there. Uh, like, mm. I like her. You're freaking her out. That's going to stop. <laughs> uh, mm. um, but, um, um, actually, if you don't mind me giving two answers to this question. No problem. <laughs> yeah. um, this was something that came up sort of after the fact in the uh, comments I was seeing on Equestria Daily. This was before I'd actually joined uh, uh, well, um, Film Fiction and started putting my stories there. Um, at the time, I was just holding, uh, hosting the story on Google Docs. And um, I mentioned that uh, uh, the part of my intent was I was sort of sick of seeing Ditsy slash Derpy portrayed as just a one-note joke, just, you know, um, either completely inept or, um, or even, you know, full-on barely mm-hmm. functional retarded, which was a big part of the motivation for writing that fic. And um, I was thinking, um, okay, what if I don't go 100% away from that? What if she does have some minor dysfunction? Uh, what if she... It's got like you know some really high high functioning Asperger's syndrome, and um, some of my own experiences with with bullying and, and social anxiety and social awkwardness went into that, but also some um, um, uh, some research I did into Asperger's syndrome and, aus- and uh, autism, and I was told you know well after I um, 
um, I'd written the story that you know by people with Asperger's that I had completely nailed it. Huh. So I was really proud of that. That's neat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All righty then. Um, I, I, you keep forgetting these things. I'm like, oh man, I'm about to talk about that later. We're gonna talk about that later. We'll be talking about the <laughs> thing. Oh. Um, next, how did you get the idea for Did You Do's Disneyland Derby Day? Well, I actually just sort of touched on that just now. Um, I, um, I was really honestly just tired of seeing her done as a one note joke, and um, it seems some really adorable. Oh, 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 a fan art of her. Um, I actually didn't even really find out about the uh, um, um, the dinky thing with the uh, um, uh, uh, with that one background uh, uh, the unicorn filly being mm-hmm. declared by uh, by fans to be her daughter. Um, I didn't find out about that until I'd actually written the first draft of, of the story, um, and I was worried about how awkwardly um, I had. Shoehorns that in, but I was, I was reassured. I thought it worked. I, I, I was reassured before I submitted it to a customer daily that I'd actually worked it in very smoothly. Um, but uh, really, it was just I was really kind of just sick of the way she was being portrayed in the fandom, and I wanted to give her a more positive portrayal. Um, where she was still kind of, you know, a little weird, a little off, you know, not quite a normal point, but, a, but, you know, a perfectly, you know, functional and capable pony, uh, even if she worries a lot that that she isn't, and um, I wanted to, um, uh, to come up with um, explanations for things like um, her her acuity mark that aren't just, you know, she has bubbles because of her bubbly brain. Um, yeah. you know, I wanted to come up with a talent that that represented, something that she could actually be proud of and mm-hmm. would be useful. And also I wanted to address the uh, uh, the naming duality um, by coming up with an origin for the nickname Derpy Hooves. Like, you know, the, the incident in the story about uh, her... Um, failing at paper mache um, in in art class back in school and, and uh, complaining to Fluttershy, my clothes have gone all derpy on me. Um, <laughs> um, so I wanted to uh, portray her in a way that um, I was like, okay, some ponies were just sort of you know jackasses. I hope the uh, um, the donkeys in Ponyville don't. Uh, you know, call me a speciesist for that. Um, um, you know, those uh, uh, those guys like to bully sticks and stones. They might see her the way that that common uh, fandom portrayal was, but the reality was that she was a you know a a a functional, responsible adult and and in, an interesting person. Um, and, you know, someone who cared about her job, cared about her daughter, and, and it was somebody worthy of respect. And the context I decided to showcase this in was, uh, was basically, um, uh, I thought, okay, let's, let's just do like kind of a slice of life. Like, um, um, let's just show her, um, Having a day at work that that is just one day on the job that just turns out to just kind of suck in every possible way, and um, uh, let's see. Uh, first off, how she deals with that on her own, and also how her friends help her deal with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so basically, as this day goes on. Um, there's this, this progression of things that keep going wrong, and and she she uh, starts going down about it, but then she runs into um, um, somebody in town that that she thinks of as a friend, who 
uh, who then provides kind of a, a, a ray of sunshine and helps her uh, uh, get over that. Um, mm-hmm. Everything from from you know very nearly looking like a dork when she couldn't figure out how to open Rarity's new mailbox to throwing a shoe and cracking a hoof on uh, on uh, Sweet Apple Acres and having uh, um, AJ and Big Mac there to uh, uh, to help her out with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, um, I just thought, you know, who we are comes out when we're at our worst. Uh, when things are going swell, you know, and we all have these masks that we wear. And when uh, when things are going fine, those masks stay firmly in place. It's it's when things start to suck that the mask starts to slip and who you are underneath starts uh, starts to leak out. So I kind of wanted to to um, uh, explore the character of Ditsy um, through the lens of a day that put her through that. Okay, that's cool. So that's, yeah, that's a great reason to write a fanfic. Yeah. So, um, oh, go ahead. Yeah, um, um, also, I just want to mention... Um, um, uh, Derpy Day was literally the first ever fanfic I've written. I oh yeah, I've I've written some fiction a little bit here and there. Um, um like I'd taken uh, creative writing classes in college, um, and uh, um, things like that when I was writing in uh, um, uh, like some of my own uh, material for a tabletop game. Um, I might you know put in. Um, a little bit of my own, you know, in-character fiction vignettes. Um, hmm. uh, but um, the uh, the way that she was being portrayed, apparently it just bugged me enough that it motivated me to actually step into the realm of actual fan fiction, not just fiction, for the first time. And awesome. it still boggles me that I managed to knock it out of the park so much. Like... Like it, it still freaks me out when I see people fan squeeing that I like their fic. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's why um, I, yeah, so I, um, I just wanted to uh, uh, get that in there. So, next question. All right, next question. Uh, I kind of already know, at least partially, who what your answer is going to be. But who are some of your favorite professional authors? Um, old uh, Jim Butcher, as previously mentioned, <laughs> because you're awesome. Hmm? So because you're awesome. Awesome well, people like you, Butcher. Well, yeah. I'm okay yeah. with that. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, who else? Who else? Who else? I've recently gotten into Charles Strauss, actually. Um, people who follow my blog on uh, uh, filmfiction.net uh, will notice that I plugged his his uh, uh, free story, Equoid recently, which is about uh, unicorns, sort of. <laughs> um, but um, um, I worked some references into his Laundry Files universe into another story of mine, and then when I saw he, he'd written a story about unicorns, like, you know, I have to tell people about this. But I read the story, and thought it was awesome, and on the strength, mm-hmm. strength of that, I bought the first Laundry Files novel for my uh, Kindle app, uh, The Atrocity Archives. I'm still working through it uh, uh, right now, but so far it's pretty awesome. Um, so I'm really, really enjoying his writing style. Um, let's see. Um, Elizabeth Moon, actually, is another author that I haven't read a lot of her stuff, but I started reading her stuff fairly recently, um, and I quite enjoyed it. Um, I just picked up um, uh, the first book in the uh, Bata's War series um, a little while ago, uh, Trading in Danger. Um, it's a uh, uh, science fiction uh, series. Basically, um, um, a, young, uh, a young woman from a very rich and powerful interstellar uh, 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 trading family was a cadet trying to join the uh, Space Navy, but for for messed up political reasons, she uh, uh, 
uh, got forced to resign. So she goes into the family uh, 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 trading business, you know, um, uh, gets uh, you know, put in charge of her own own uh, cargo ship, and um, and she's she's not only somebody with this experience and background in commerce, but also a fair bit of military training. And that actually turns out to be uh, quite useful when uh, uh, they run in, in, into uh, uh, some pirates uh, later on in the book. Um, and I've been meaning to get to the second book in the series because I enjoyed the first one so much. And she also wrote some fantasy novels. That, there's a series of The Deed of Paxanarian that... Uh, uh, some friends of mine um, have recommended, so that's also on my to-read list. <laughs> um, and on the topic of space sci-fi, uh, David Weber. Um, I've read a number of the uh, Honor Harrington books, and I'm not up to date in the series by any measure, but I, <laughs> um, I've read a good few of them. And... Um, um, there's some accusations that the character of Honor Harrington might be a bit of a uh, Mary Sue, um, but eh, you know what? I enjoy the story so much that I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I can I can put up with uh, some foibles of of an author's writing style if if uh, the right's good enough. Um, yeah, yeah, that's good. So. And uh, we all put up with George R. R. Barton, despite the fact that he yeah. seems to have a fetish for describing food to us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, among other other things. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> I I enjoy the Game of Thrones HBO series. I've had a hard time getting into the books. They're just kind of dense. I was gonna say yeah, dense is the best word for those books. Like yeah. Uh, um, yeah, okay. I could do an entire podcast about uh, the, the books and the show. And the yeah. Um, I've, I've heard that he's uh, joked to his fans, though, that the final book in the series is going to be nothing but 800 pages of vivid descriptions of snow falling on graves. <laughs> oh, boy. <Whoa. laughs> I mean, I like, I like George R. Martin a lot. I do think... Um, you know, personally, like, yeah, occasionally you'll find, like, oh, man, this author I love has a problem in real life where he actually doesn't like fan fiction, like, severely does not like it. He, he thinks it's, like, we just start, like, it's not even training wheels. He described it as, like, it's just a, it's wasting your time as a writer or something like that. And I was like, oh, George, why can't you be like Jim Butcher and hair? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I really have to disagree with that sentiment. As I'm sure you yeah. probably have guessed. Um, <laughs> There's a saying. So. There's a saying that every author has one million bad words that they need to get out of them before they can actually start putting good words down in the writing. And I think, um, um, I think for some people, uh, writing fan fiction might be a way to get some of those million bad words out. And only get a million bad words out, but get a million bad words out. And have criticism on every single one of them yeah. by a bunch of different people yeah. in a huge interactive community. Yeah. Plus, it, and and have at the same time be able to edit other people's stories and criticize theirs, therefore building your own critical skills. Yeah, and it can be a lot easier to kind of dive into writing a story when you have established characters and an established world to work with, so you yeah. can focus on taking those characters and putting them into a story. And honestly. The, the the biggest reason for it, I think the best reason to do anything is it's fun. Yeah. You know, I write fan fiction because I enjoy doing it. Hmm. Um, and yeah, you know, agreed. Yeah. So you know, if you're having fun and you're not hurting anybody, rock the heck on. I say. So. Yep. All right, uh, this is where we would do emails, and we have one. Guys, it's been like two months. You only got one email. I was about to say, really? Oh, man. I know, right? And I would say our Sam, fans have let us down, but it's been so long since we had actually made an episode that that might be kind of hypocritical of me. Yeah. 
But Sam, 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 Sam. Can you yes. can you guess who it is? Oh man. Um. No. 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 Give, give me a minute. Um. Oh. Wait. No. Um. Hmm. Tom Selleck. Sadly, no. Oh, freaking! Come on. I do like Tom Selleck. That would be fun. No. 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 <laughs> it is in fact Cody Fett. Oh well, that's just as exciting. Sir, I believe it means sirs. I'm guessing, or just I guess he's not talking to you, Sam. Oh so well, never mind. Yourself. I take that back. It's not exciting at all. Thanks, oh. Cody. Remember a few months ago when I did send in an email? Uh, I sent in an email for every episode, and when I did, I said that I was involved with a project. And remember how I kept recommending All American Girl? No, I don't remember you recommending that every single week. Well, it turns out those things are related because the author of All American Girl spent the last few years writing a novel, and it's done now. And Cody helped edit and research it, and it has a Kickstarter. Oh. And he really wants us to help them get, re- you know, an MLP fanfic author get recognized professionally, and uh, maybe spread word of the project and stuff. Uh, only problem is our show's really, really late, and so the Kickstarter ended and didn't get funded. Oh. So Cody, and to author of uh, Mr. Rob Barda, author of All American Girl, I offer a sincere apology. I'm not sure if our podcast would have gotten you the other six thousand dollars you needed that you're short by. So I'm really sorry that that didn't happen. I am completely behind fanfic authors becoming professional authors, 100%. And I'm really sad. Uh, if he ever does another Kickstarter or if there's anything else like that again, please send it in, and I will be sure to plug it on the show. Um, and that's all Cody had to say. Apparently he didn't oh. read. Well, he, he, I don't think he's ever read any of the things we talk about. He just talks about stuff. But <laughs> we, we welcome him in anyway. All are welcome into the book club. True. Yeah, I, I just did that thing where you suck in a breath through your teeth, like when you stub your toe really bad. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh man, that's a bummer. That is. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so, uh, so the Kickstarter failed? Yeah, it failed. It, it oh, got man. a little under $2,000, and it, the goal was 8000 Oh, oh that's nice. Oh, Sad yeah. day. Like, it was uh, looking at. It looks like an interesting book. It's a, uh, it's a military mech sci-fi thing. Mm-hmm. It, it was it Battlestar Galactica meets Macross and with Starship Troopers in a blender. <laughs> oh man, uh, that actually sounds pretty cool. I would I would totally read that. That sounds like exactly the kind of thing I would be in the mood to read when it's uh, uh when it's uh, two a.m. and I'm. Lying in bed and sleep isn't happening. Um, that, yeah. uh, okay, that maybe didn't sound as much like praise as, as I'd intended to. As, 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 <laughs> but it really is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, I, I was thinking that's kind of a complimentary statement that I heard it. I was like, uh, it doesn't really sound like one. No, that makes sense. That's always the time when I need something exceptionally compelling because of how tired yeah. I am. <laughs> Speaking of praise, really, really well done segue there. Wow. Let's talk about Dixie Doo's Dismally Derpy Day. Okay. Yeah, really fun thing to talk about. So, Sam, I'm going to have you go first. I'm going to let you take the heat first. <laughs> okay. Well, Jump into the fray. It does make sense. I'm the one who read it first and was all like, oh, man, you got to do an episode on this when it comes to Derpy because I, I, I really, really, really loved it. <laughs> it was... Choose your it's, words it's, carefully. <laughs> um, it's my favorite, no, um, <laughs> it, um, I'm trying to figure out what I can say that accurately reflects what I liked about it without just retreading the same ground, um, because most of the stuff that I really liked about it's already been talked about when we were asking you about, uh, your favorite aspects of it and stuff, but I, I think that from what I've seen, Jerry's portrayal tends to come down, in fan fiction, tends to come down to one of three things, either the same use as in the show, just as a little background joke or something like that, which of course is always fun, you know, working show memes and jokes into fanfics when not done to the D&D ponies constantly is really fun, yes. <laughs> um, She's a but, Yeah, so there was, there was that, um, and then there was the portrayal that had already been mentioned of her being like entirely inept and that that always that just that always just seemed really mean spirited to me, and I I don't Agreed. enjoy it whatsoever. Um, and then That's the other one, yeah. And then the other one, which can work but just doesn't have much depth to it, is the rather typical, you know, oh well, of course you can't do anything right, but you're nice and have a charm of your own. And like you know, you know, I get that that works, but it just it 
generally when I've seen it, it tends to be lacking in a particular depth. You know, because it, it's not actually... I liked what Dizzy Do's Ismaline Derby Day did in that it actually developed what her cutie mark meant, what her talents are, and what her strengths are, and developed her as a character beyond just this, you know, well, of course you're derpy, but it's okay because you're you. You know, that that's that's just always been a particularly shallow concept to me without going much further into the character. But I think that Dizzy, Do- Dizzy Do's Derp... Yeah, wow, why am I... Just call it Derpy Day. Yeah, I'll just call it Derpy Day. Yeah, I think the Derpy Day. We we should like have a contest. Whoever can <laughs> do a YouTube video response and say this, you know, the most times really fast wins a prize or something. Um, anyway, yeah, um, I thought the Derpy Day did a very good job of developing her character and actually developing her both as someone who has these problems, but as someone who actually is valuable beyond that instead of uh, beyond that and in spite of it, instead of just, you know, is special anyway. Um, and also when it comes down to it, it's just kind of freaking adorable sometimes. <laughs> um, but you know, the, the stuff Sam had the biggest weakness for adorable I've ever seen. Yeah. that It's, it's pretty big sometimes, but yeah. Um, the, the stuff with, Big Mac near the end was really fun. Um, and the the discussion with Twilight was fun. And then with Fluttershy, I really enjoyed that scene as well. Um, it's, it's just really cute sometimes. And, and, and then, I mean, you know, a lot of other praise that's a bit more typical, I suppose. You know, just things like I thought the writing was very well done and that the characters, um, you, know, you know, the dialogue flowed naturally and it seemed very... It seemed to fit with the characters and seemed very real. And, um, you know, of course, that stuff was good. And just, yeah, it was a very, as just a slice of of Ditsy's life, it really, really worked for me very well. Um, you know, just taking the, the good and the bad of maybe not, you know, an everyday day, but, a fair, you know, fairly normal occurrences and... Um, putting them all into something that speaks very deeply into who this character is. I, I think that this fic did a very good job at that. And it was a uh, rather enjoyable, funny, and relentlessly adorable at times um, read while I, while I was at it. So I, I just very much enjoyed it and liked it a lot. So, yeah, that, that was okay. redundant. I enjoyed it and liked it a lot. But whatever. <laughs> That's how much I liked it, enough to be redundant. So. Okay. Well, um, everything you described was basically what I was aiming for when I I wrote it. I um, I was also um, I think I touched on this before, but I was I was trying to portray her as you know competent in what she does too. I was kind of worried um, um, in retrospect after writing the story that um, uh, that just mentioning that. Um, she had a, a perfect performance record at uh, um, at the post office. Was kind of a lot of a uh, tell not show, but um, I think I managed to compensate for that by showing how much she cared about um, um, her performance record and um, how badly she wanted to actually you know finish her route despite a nasty injury. And um, and also showing her her dedication to her daughter and um, being a, a a a good mother to her, um, I think those bits helped um, um, helped bring it across that that you know no she's not just this um, inept klutz that everybody just kind of politely endures. No, she's actually good at what she does. She just has some some difficulties in certain areas. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I liked that a lot. I thought I think I just think it worked a lot better for the character than either making fun of her for her problems or just kind of a wishy washy, you know, like oh well, you're special, so it's all right thing, you know. So yeah, yeah I think you did a good job with that, and I'm glad you waited for it. <laughs> and now it's my turn. Oh no, uh, or yes. yes, yes, okay. So I I did read this. I don't think I told the same. I read it. A little bit after he mentioned it the first time, like a couple months, I think. And I, for some reason, when I first read it, it didn't affect me that much. I thought it was, you know, good, but it didn't really much an impact. 
So I reread it this week because we were doing it, and it pretty much affected me insanely hard, and I have a lot to talk about with it. <laughs> uh, first thing, I just thought of this as we were talking about it. I don't know if this is a like actual inspiration or it's just something I just you know I'm reading into it. It kind of feels to me like uh, if you've ever read it, I know Sam hasn't, but you might have. The Dresden Files short story, Harry's Day Off. I don't believe I have. I've read some of the short stories the, in the, the side I, jobs compilation. All right, it's in there. It's uh, the idea is that Harry gets a day off for the first time in a long time. And he's like, I'm going to spend it. I'm going to, like, be all... I'm going to read books all day and sleep in. And I'm going to go all day with my girlfriend. It's going to be awesome. And then everything goes wrong. Hmm. Like, every little thing that can... Every mean-spirited thing that can happen, happens. And it's just... It's hysterical. It's it, for comedy. And I just realized, thinking about it, you could... The, the, just looking at the plot structure of this fic... You could totally have done it for comedy in that way, in that, oh my gosh, will nothing stop being, you know, will nothing stop going wrong? But you went it for drama, and it worked perfectly. Well, kind so, of mostly uh, dramedy, things. sort of. Dramedy, yes. So, okay, first, things I really liked, uh, which I quite a bit. Uh, first thing, the thing that hit me the most is just how much, okay, the thing that really, really, the, the biggest reason I like it is how much I identify with Sir, uh, did see throughout the entire thing. Mm. And the big reason is A. Um, that entire thing where she, she's talking, you know, the whole thing keeps coming back. The fact that there are bullies who, who tease her as a kid and are kind of, you know, sometimes tease her now. And that she always flips out on them. And, like, there's nothing, you know, people give her that advice. And it, and she's just frustrated that they would give her that advice. Like, you know, oh, I, I, yeah, I've never tried that. I've never yeah. tried just not reacting. And that really fits with me because I I got bullied a lot in school and I had... That was my thing. There were just certain words, there were just certain phrases, certain ways of bullying me that would always set me off. And there was nothing. I, I probably still could not. I haven't bullied in so long, but I'm pretty sure those things would still work. I've never found anything for it. There's, it's just, there, it's like she says, there's just no way you can't react to it. You have to. The only problem with me is a little worse with me. I was kind of a violent angry rather than just a yelling angry. So... I can definitely, I definitely relate with her there. That is just, ah. Uh. And then the entire thing with, uh, with the hoof, and, you know, and hurting yourself. That, that really worked for me because I have had something like that happen, where you're just going about your day, you make, you just mess up one small thing, like no one would think anything of it, but it ends up causing you so much pain, and it just completely screws everything up for days. And you're just, it's just awful. And I've, I've had that happen, and I just... So for that, I completely relate to the fic. I love it. Um, I liked a lot of the Big Mac or Dizzy reactions, uh, like interactions. I like how a lot of the main six were portrayed. I think you really nailed them hmm. uh, and how to portray them. I have one complaint, and it's a complaint that... It isn't necessarily a large one, but the more I thought about it, the more like off-putting it was is I don't think you did Pinky very well. And I no. have a couple things of that. Yes, I don't. First of all, first of all, the thing, first thing that, like, made me go, huh, is, um, I think, uh, what was the way I thought of it? It feels like the Pinky you have in the hospital scene is more of one of the clone Pinkies than the real Pinky. I think that they have shown very solidly that Pinkie Pie has more depth than that. She has more uh, compassion than that. And she is capable of realizing that someone is in horrible pain and does and is really freaking out. I don't think that she would have gone on to the extent that she did. I do think a smaller, you know, cutting it back a little bit would have worked. You know, if if, if they had, to, if, like, she was going on for a while and they're like, hey, Pinkie, you're kind of, you know, she's kind of, like, not lying. If she was like, oh, okay. And then she was calmed down after that. But... The fact that she just kept going and it was this extended scene really irked me. Mm. And then it led me to another thought. I don't – and I I think it's a show-don't-tell problem. I think that throughout the entire fic, people keep uh, – Ditsy keeps thinking, and I told people to say that, oh, well, we like Pinky. But in the fic itself, through actions, no one likes Pinky. No one does a single – 
says a single thing or does a single nice thing to Pinkie Pie. Everyone is constantly annoyed with her, and that's it. That's all of the interaction with Pinkie is she does things, people are annoyed. And I think that's really a problem because you got all the other main six so perfectly, but with her, it's just her doing things and everyone going, Ugh, Pinky, I can't take you right now. And if it was like one scene, I would have been fine. If it just been like a, Pinky can be a little bit much at times, I would have been okay. But because that's the only thing that happened with her, it feels really off-putting. It feels, and I don't, I'm not accusing you of this, it just, it feels like you don't like Pinky. It feels like you think she's annoying and you transferred that onto Derby in such a way that as someone who loves the hell out of Pinkie Pie, and she's one of my favorites, it's really off-putting seeing her for, both portrayed in that way and everyone react to her in that way. Um, but that's my only real complaint. Weirdly enough, um, I didn't see that at all. I didn't, wouldn't think you would, Sam. I, you are not a Pinkie lover. Well, no, well, no I, I do love... She's not my favorite, but I do love Pinkie. But not only did I not really notice that about the rest of the fic, but... I could totally see Pinky doing something like she was at the near the end because it's not like she was actually being all like, oh well, you know, I don't care if you're, I'm not being compassionate enough to notice that you're hurt or something. It was that she, being the person that she is or the pony that she is, thought that that was a good thing to help. The idea of having a fun party with a bunch of other ponies and stuff like that is what would actually cheer Ditsy up. And having been an introvert with a lot of extroverted friends, stuff like that has happened to me, too. People think, no, man, you need to unwind. Then, yeah, what better way than to go hang and, out with friends? And I'm like, heck no. No, just stay away. And, you know. and I so agree. I can, and I agree I, to an extent. I didn't think that that was outside of her character. I Okay, I agree to the point where they go, Pinky, she doesn't want to party. But when they tell her that, her reaction is, well, then something's wrong with my party. It isn't, oh, there are people who don't like them, which I think is... Something that, like, they even had in it, part of one is partly about that. And I think that is something that she has at least some grasp of, that not everyone wants to go to a party all the time. People have other things they want and have to do, and they might even not be someone who's is particularly fond of I mean, uh, the Cranky Doodle episode, right there. I mean, it, I think that is, too, I, like I'm saying, this wouldn't be a problem if it hadn't been such a long scene. But the fact that it was, and it, they kept going pinky no, pinky no, and it took like three warnings, that's when I think it was too far. Actually, I, I think, think of the Cranky Doodle episode is perfect reason why something like this could have happened. <laughs> no, but she does. She didn't keep trying to throw him a party. She was just trying to be his friend. But she th- tried to throw him a party and was like, okay, I guess parties aren't the way to make him my friend. And switched tactics. She, she is not a one-note, parties are the answer to everything. That was shown. She has things besides those. Um, I, do think that is a, I do think that is a, a fair criticism, honestly. Um, although, keep in mind, um, the story was written a fair while ago. Definitely predates the uh, 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 the Cranky Doodle episode. Oh, it does? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, um, um, I would have to look up the... Um, uh, the, the exact date when I first shared my uh, uh, first draft of it on uh, um, on uh, the RPG Net forums, um, but it it might even have still been during season one that I first wrote it. So part of that is is probably just the character of Pinky not having been as well developed on the show at the time, but also. Um, I think it is fair to say that Pinky was the character I had the hardest time writing for. Um, and it's probably fair to say that some of my own frustration uh, came out into that scene. As I, I, I said earlier, um, a fair bit of myself is is written into that portrayal of, of, of uh, Dipsy. It, it's not an exact one-to-one correlation, but there, there's elements in there. And I have had some frustrations dealing with uh, uh, extremely introverted, uh, or, or uh, sorry, um, extremely extroverted, uh, well-meaning friends who don't, you know, quite get me um, um, at times in the past. Um, so, yeah, I, um, 
Uh, overall, I'd say that probably is a a a, a fair criticism. Um, as I can believe your explanation makes complete sense. I understand. It's it wouldn't be a thing I would have brought up if it. It. I think I only bring it up because it's a one shot, honestly. Yeah. Because in a one shot, it's like reviewing a short story or a film. It is a thing that is a small self-contained thing, yeah. and so everything in it has to be useful. So. It is a a small thing like that can still irk me enough in this. Like if it'd been like a five chapter thing, I would have been like, oh, who cares? Yeah, I think but, if I if I was to write the story now, and if it was set after the uh, Cranky Doodle episode, um, that whole thing probably would have turned out somewhat that differently. Um, okay. But the other things you mentioned about the story, the things that you liked, I wanted to uh, to mention about those. Um, the, uh, uh, the bullying and the injury, both of those I drew quite a bit from real life. Yeah, I, I know, and that's why it fits so well. Yeah, um, um, her rant, where she just completely tears into Twilight for giving her the same advice she's been hearing since she was a foal, that is exactly the, uh, the same thing I've been wanting you know, to tell people, uh, you know, for ages when I was a kid, when they, they, they gave me that advice, like, no, it doesn't work. And I'm actually pretty outspoken online when the topic uh, 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 comes up. Like, I I was very glad to see the It Gets Better campaign uh, uh, come into existence. Um, uh, agreed. Um, you know, uh, there's some fair criticisms to be made about uh, Onta Dan Savage, but that is easily one of the best things he has ever done, getting that thing started. Mm-hmm. And um, um, uh, I kind of feel a little bad, or actually more than a little bad for saying this, because um, uh, gay and trans bullying and homophobia and transphobia are such huge problems still. Um, I mean, it's been decades since the Stonewall riots, and we're still seeing people getting brutally murdered just for being what they are. Yeah. Um, um, or driven to suicide for it. So I, because of how big a problem that is, I kind of feel bad for thinking this, but I do just kind of wish the... It gets better campaign and the focus on gay and trans bullying would broaden its separate. Uh, well, uh, 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 not just that it would, uh, uh, would uh, broaden its scope to include all bullying. Yes, because my perspective on on it is basically bullying is child abuse, yeah. and there you the, go. and the idea that we tolerate it when the when the abuser is another child is simply perverse. Huh. Yes. And I'm incredibly glad that the issue is finally getting the attention that it is, and and I just wish it would be a bit broader. But I I'm really not going to spite them or fault them for focusing on uh, um, uh, gay and trans youth yeah. um, uh, for the time being. Um, um, so you know I. Um, um, I was bullied really badly. Um, um, you mentioned yourself that uh, uh, that you have certain things that you're still sensitive about. I thankfully have gotten over a lot of that. I used to be incredibly sensitive about my speech impediment, which mm-hmm. which I, I don't even know if you've noticed so far because it, it really kind of comes and goes. But it used to be a lot worse when I was younger. Mm. Uh, I spent years in speech therapy, and it worked. Um, but uh, uh, that's actually one of the reasons I picked uh, Claudia Caesar as my online handle. Um, huh. But uh, uh, I was incredibly self-conscious about that for years, even after graduating from high school. But um, you know, nowadays I'm able to joke about it, and I'm glad. I'm incredibly glad that I'm. I've finally been able to move past that to an extent, but oh, I, um, I had to see a therapist for years when I was young because of 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 everything that this was was doing to me. Um, 
Um, um, and uh, so the, the degree to which bullying still gets tolerated and, and the way that the same ineffectual advice still gets tossed around is a major sore spot for me. Yeah. Uh, so that, so writing that, that whole interaction with sticks and stones and the, uh, uh, the rant in the library was kind of cathartic for me as for the, uh, uh, the injury. Well, um, um, I have what I like to call my old gaming injury. (laughs) I was in a live action, uh, role-playing game on uh, the college campus. I was attending, um, back in the, um, uh, mid nineties, this was, and, um, there's just one session where one of the other characters stole something from my character, and I was, you know, chasing them around, you know, in character. But rather than, um, uh, than flagging down a game master and saying, hey, you know, um, uh, my character's kind of a bruiser, I'm not, let's, you know, actually use the game rules to resolve, uh, resolve this chase, um, I just, you know, instead physically ran after the person and tried to make a sharp turn. And then all of a sudden, I just sort of fell over, and my world was pain. I still have to wear a brace on that knee, and it still hurts when the weather changes. Oh, oh that's just like, unfortunate. It was decades ago, and that knee has not healed completely. Um, in fact, a few weeks later, there was a uh, um, a session where one of the game masters um, uh, told me, okay, one of the characters is going to go kind of Manchurian candidate, pull out a gun, and shoot somebody um, just in the middle of the crowd. Um, you know, do you want to be that person? I'm like, okay, sure. And I, I, basically when that happened, I just fell down and reenacted injuring my knee. It was like Mr. Horn <laughs> from Reservoir Dogs. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, both those bits were very much drawn from real life. Uh, so. All right. I guess now is the time, Sam, hmm? we should talk about Derpy slash Ditsy and how she's done in fanfics and maybe even a little bit on the show. Oh, well. All right, so uh, I guess I should actually probably start off because I'm yeah. a host. I mean. Okay, great, so. Huh? Yeah, I, terrible burden I have. So, <laughs> I know. Oh, hey, 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 hey. I, I'm a monarch. I'm going to pass it on one day. Um, <laughs> Okay, so derpy, derpy, derpy. I, there, like you said, we've already kind of talked about it. There are <laughs> certain stock portrayals of her, and I think I, I definitely what I like is the room. I'm going to talk about later. I'm going to go through uh, when it comes to recommendations. I'm just going to talk about all the different ways she's been portrayed. I will actually bring up a little bit more than just um, to what extent. I guess that is the first good thing. Like, to what extent is she? Um, I guess, disabled, quote-unquote. Like, does she have... Is it just an eye thing, or is it a... Um, is there anything brain-related going on, and to what extent? All that kind of stuff, I think, is really... That's a, that's always a great, you know, axis to put your fic on. From, oh yeah, she's totally normal, to, oh man, she's got problems, you know. Um, and then I really like... It's one of the things... I know a lot of people who don't like Fanon, um, who don't like the the relationships we built up, the the ideas of these connections between these background ponies, and I like them because uh, the way it is, it's good story space. It is yes. Um, for all we know, Dinky isn't her daughter in canon, but you know what? Dink, Derpy is you know just a nebulous entity already. But when you give her a daughter, you open up so much story space because now you have to ask yourself. Is, is Dinky an only child? Or, uh, who's her father? Are they still together? What happened? Is he dead? Are they divorced? Um, so many, you know, so many interesting questions. And the same thing when you bring up Sparkler. So is Sparkler, uh, a, like, adopted? Or is Sparkler a, um, you know, there's so many great story questions get opened up. And answering them, and in what way you answer them, are so important. And I almost say they're almost more important than they're just as important as how you deal with her derpiness. I think they are some of the most interesting story space because there isn't... It reminds me a little bit of Berry Punch. It's like 
Fairy Punch, oh, she's an alcoholic. Oh, what if she's an alcoholic with a daughter? Now it's, oh, shit, what are you going to do with that? That's a great... That's a great line. What are you going to... What's the punch? It's... <laughs> punch. Yes, I know. <laughs> that wasn't intended. Mm-hmm. Until I said it. <laughs> so... <Bunch>. But don't... <laughs> what, what do you call a guy falling down the stairs holding a symbol? But don't... Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> um... <sighs> I know, sorry. <laughs> I'm really sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> but no, I. that is one of the ways I look at things, and I think that's important for Derpy, is I think that she has so much story space, and I think Dinky adds, almost doubles it, if not more. Hmm. Yeah. Would, would um, um, yeah I, um, honestly, um, I think once I, I found out about the, uh, uh, the whole Dinky fanon idea, uh, while I was uh, um, the process of, of uh, revising the story, um, um, I realized that um, um, it added a lot of depth to it, and also, let's be honest, a lot of uh, a lot of ultra adorbs. Um, <laughs> um, and uh, uh, I don't think we've mentioned it yet, but there's a much shorter sequel to Derpy Day. Uh, Dinky debates dexterity, destiny, and dinner. You know, I actually uh, just noticed that a little while ago, and I need to yeah. read it. Yeah. yeah, most of that is a conversation between um, uh, Dinky and Sparkler, Ooh. and um, it um, kind of explores their their uh, relationship. Um, I I have a fairly well developed um, head canon of the nature of that family, but I haven't gotten it all down in text yet. I have another story about that family planned with some very early writing done, but I don't actually have a complete chapter uploaded yet. But, um, um, you know, adding a daughter to that dynamic, so, uh, suddenly it's uh, it's not just, okay, how does this, this uh, character deal with uh, whatever difficulties she has in her daily life? It, it then becomes how does she deal with this and also take care of her daughter? Yeah. And that adds this whole other dimension, and it added a whole other dimension to the story. I thought, you know, with her being worried about um, uh, 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 how her, her daughter is doing, you know, she's you know she's bleeding from her hoof, and the biggest thing she's worried about is school's getting out soon. Who's going to pick up Dinky? Yes. Um, um, so uh, that gave me a lot more room to um, uh, to flesh her out, and then um, um, the show gave us a canon sister to Dinky. Yeah. Um, and um, and I'm like, okay, how can I work this in? And all, and all of a sudden, she's sprouting all these connections to other characters. And it's just making the fields so much more fertile to work with. Yes, definitely. Hmm. Um, and that actually reminds me, I do love all the different explanations about Sparkler. My personal favorite, I've seen them done the least often. I like the idea that Sparkler is actually her daughter, but hmm. but uh, she's like a the equivalent of like a teen pregnancy, hmm. like that, uh, sh- that not planned at all, and because of that, kind of embarrassing. Yeah, I, I've seen some. Uh, some other uh, um, interpretations. Um, um, actually, there's another fanfic author I um, I really like, Rainbow Double Dash. Um, um, he started the uh, um, the Lunarverse, if you're familiar with it. Ah, uh, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I knew I knew that. Um, and I honestly, the um, uh, the five words that immediately sold me on the entire premise. Dinky do element of kindness. Yeah. Oh. Um, it was like I, I saw that and and my response was not enough yes in the world. Um, oh. So I immediately dove into that and um, and not only that, but I started reading the story and realized, holy crap, this guy's using my portrayal of Ditsy in his story. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So I posted a comment on um, on the story uh, uh, just basically fan-squeeing at him 
and he fan squeed back at me, and it turned into this kind of recursive loop <laughs> of, of fan squeeing until he had to go well, <laughs> force quit the fandom. Um, oh, that yeah. uh, that that's happened. That happened actually last episode. <sighs> oh, oh, boy, that. Had, oh, we had on um, Smoking Gun, who does Only Human, and our other co-host for the day was Corey Williams, who does the Vinyl Scratch Tapes. Ah. Uh, and so... The Vinyl Scratch Tapes hugely influences Only Human, and then he had to read Only Human for the, to be a co-host, and he was like, oh my god, this is amazing. And because, for those of you, I'll talk about this a little bit later, but because of this show, a special chapter of Only Human was written by Corey Williams, and I'm so glad that that was made. It was so <laughs> but uh, something I thought was really interesting about reading the Lunarverse was the, uh, the exploration into the uh, uh, the elements of that family that hadn't yet been defined. Because uh, as I mentioned, I have my own headcanon for what the family is like. But, yeah. but I haven't published any stories yet that go into further detail. Um, so he filled in that, uh, that space. Is, it's on his own. And mm-hmm. um, in one of the the uh, uh, the subsequent stories. Um, actually, the first story in the series was um, just a Lunarverse version of of um, uh, Ghostbusters. Yeah, yeah um, Sam's talked about that one a lot. Yeah, yeah. I enjoyed that one actually. I, I kind of wanted to read more in the Lunarverse, yeah. but I haven't gotten around to it yet. Yeah. Um, but later on, um, he wrote uh, "Longest Night, Longest Day," which was the uh, sort of first story of the whole thing. And uh, there's a bit where uh, our Trixie and her five in- in- friends, her five you know, brand new friends that she made in front of you, um, are in the, uh, uh, they are free force and they're all uh, trading stories. Uh, this is actually the bit where Shirley establishes herself as the element of laughter uh, by, you know, doing this to raise people's spirits. And they're all, Trading stories about uh, special talents and uh, and cutie marks and um, um, and uh, uh, generally who they are because they didn't all know each other very well before then. And uh, Ditsy explains um, how her cutie mark represents her uh, a talent with wind currents. And uh, she just makes a passing comment about having terrible taste in men, and um, <laughs> um, and everybody um, who didn't know her very well was thinking, uh, yeah, that probably has something to do with the uh, daughter. But it didn't get explained in detail until a later story, where uh, we find out that um, um, Dinky was actually the result of a teen pregnancy when. Um, she was in a relationship with a, a married stallion. Um, oh. And, oh. and Sparkler was the daughter of that family. Okay. And then uh, later on, Sparkler moved to Ponyville, not having any idea that Ditsy and, and her own father's daughter with her lived in that town. And um, they found out uh, you know, um, um, you know she, she finds out about it and just freaks out. And um, I believe that was the story Family Matters, also by <laughs> Rainbow Flash. And um, um, that had some incredibly powerful scenes, um, I thought. It was a darker interpretation of the... Uh, um, the history of that family than I personally have gone for, but it it made for a very good story, I thought. Hmm. Mm. Yes. Cool. So, Sam, what do you want to say about Derpy? Um, not all that much that I've already said. Um, <laughs> really, I really enjoy her as a character, um, and on a meta level, I simply love that I think that it said a lot about the creators of this show and their relationship with their fandom, that they actually decided to take one of the largest fan-made ideas about their show and actually insert it into the show as the fans had pictured it. 
Mm-hmm. And I think that the people who screwed that up suck. Because um, <sighs> I just saw that as yeah. such a wonderful... Um, well, she's back in season wonderful four. wonderful love note to the fans, really. Yeah. Well, yeah, and see, uh, knowing that makes me very happy, and uh, and I hope that they uh, could continue never... it that well. Though, theoretically, Grey Delisle is supposed to be voicing her, which... Well, I, I was going to bring up, like, uh, should we talk about that? The, uh... uh I, think the it, I think it'd be all right. I see no reason why not. Has everyone here, uh, have you seen it as well? Uh, the, uh, uh what are we derp, talking about? Hmm? Epic derp type? Uh, epic, uh, epic derp type time, I think, is Wait, what it's called? What? I haven't seen that. Or Epic Rage Time. Epic Rage Time. The, uh, the one where it's, it's, uh, derpy voiced by Great Alisle. Uh, no, I don't believe I've seen that. I... I don't oh. know about that either, actually. That's the one where, that's the thing, that's the one thing where Derpy is voiced by Great Delisle. See, though, I was uh, going off the fact that she confirmed that to us in person at SAC Anime oh. a while ago, but... Oh, well, you didn't know? Oh, well, I can link, uh, it is in the show notes now, Epic Rage Time, by the same three people who did Epic Love Time and Epic Cupcake Time, oh. uh, which I, I love those videos. Um, yeah, it's Great Delisle doing uh, Derpy, and she has a whole, she, her voice is really good, and the video is hysterical. Uh, though Celestia kind of seals the seals the whole video with one line, where it like zooms in on her, and she goes, "Mother of me." <laughs> oh. Wait, was was this? Was it's the Incredible the Hulk Derpy. Uh, this was the clip where somebody else gets the last muffin and she rages out. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I have seen that. All right. Okay. Yeah. So that I'll uh, have, have to link that to me later because. Okay. Great Delisle uh, voice Derby, yes. Uh, Great Delisle, I know that name. I'm not connecting it. She's with a Derby. doula from Avatar: The Last Airbender. Ah, yes. Okay, so I didn't have to go more than that. So okay, yeah. I hate when I have to go past that because yeah, I'm she, like, digging. Yeah, I um uh when I was watching that show on Netflix, um I remember thinking, wow, that was a fantastic job with that character's voice, whoever that is. Um. So, okay. Um, so, yes, I, ha- I have seen that one. I just didn't recognize the title. So. All right. But, yes, that, that video is hilarious. And if that's the voice she's doing for Derby, I am completely okay with that. So, uh, are you saying that, uh, something about her uh, voicing Derpy again on the show? Yeah, no. Uh, basic, we were at Sack Anime. Mm-hmm. Um, and Great Alisle was there. Well, actually, I wasn't there. These guys. Sam was there. But I didn't get to go because it was winter, and I never get to go to winter one. Mm-hmm. Um, and Great Alisle was there, and our friend had her sign his computer, and he asked her just for anything her uh, character she does would say. Or so she, she, she asked, like, oh, you're going to be in My Little Pony. She's like, I'm going to sign your computer with what my character says. Well, we did she, ask her to sign it with what so, with a line by her character, yes. But, okay. But, <laughs> yes. But yeah. and, he, and, she, and she signed Muffins. <laughs> So ever since then, it seems to have been good. Though admittedly, that was like way back when season three was just, you know, having rumors and stuff about it. So I kind of figured that was going to happen in season three, and then it didn't. Well, it was but... one year ago, almost. Yeah. About a year ago. Well, the thing is, I still think she's trolling. <laughs> I think I think that actually she's, she is, because she, all she said originally, the big thing was that Great Alisle was voicing a gray pony. Yeah. And then she did that. I think Octavia is going to say the word muffin. <laughs> <laughs> That would be hilarious. I, mean, I wouldn't put you, that past her either. <laughs> she'll like put it in the script and she will force it to happen. Great Delisle, for the for the record, and those of you listeners who don't know awesome voice actors, is the voice actress of Azula from Avatar The Last Airbender. And if you don't know who that is, I'm not even going to try um, because fix your life. Okay, fix in it. The notes, there's a, in the show notes right now, there's going to be a wiki on how to. It's how to form a noose. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, there will be a link to the DVDs, and you should just buy. Uh, like, okay, <laughs> it works. It makes it work better. Yeah. All right. So moving, moving right along the loose thing. Right. Yes. Um, is updates. Right. Okay. Otherwise known as the point where Roy gets to talk about cool stories that he likes that have that are still being written. And Sam goes. Uh, I know. Uh, you know what? I'll I'll start. I know. Read stories. Just in case. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm gonna go with mine first. So, uh, some really cool stuff happened. First, Flash Fog by Quacker Jack update a couple times. Uh, still very funny. The character development that's really good. And I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna talk about it. 
the special chapter of Only Human by Corey Williams. Um, for those of you who have read the fic uh, and know who she is, Synergy, the uh, executive character, it's all from her point of view. Because as they talked about on the show last week, uh, last week, last episode, um, Synergy was Corey Sarek's character, and he thought that she was badass and needed to write something. And uh, my notes on this, um, I really need to find a way to punch Corey in the soul uh, in retaliation for what he did to me. Because this hurt, like, badly. And I will find a way to get him back. <laughs> and speaking of that story, Only Human itself has finished its first volume. I like to, I think of it as a season, but volume, whatever. Um, I'd say it is the best chapter yet. Um, it is, for those of you who know the story, it is the pilot of the show and then cutting to characters watching the show as it's being aired for the first time. Um, it is hilarious. It has some really heartbreaking parts in it. Um, especially when it, uh, the funny stuff, whenever it cuts to vinyl, Vinyl is drunk and being hilarious. Uh, she keeps going, she wants the D! <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, it's some great references. There were so many Superman references you don't even know. I even missed one. We were talk- Me and Smokey were talking about it. He's like, did you catch the one to Kingdom Come? And I was like, I read that like three years ago. No, I did not catch the one to Kingdom Come. But like, uh, one of the ca- main characters in the show is called Clark. And he's a reporter, and he talks to a guy named Perry, who's old, and ha- has, like, a New York accent. And I was like, oh, wow. Really laying it on thick there. Um, and it's... Oh, and make, if you try to visualize what's happening in the show, so perfect. Um, I don't know. It's just... And it's a great allegory for the beginning of My Little Pony, the first two part. It really fits. Hmm. Like... It is as people say, like yeah, it's not it's not a perfect. It was they weren't perfect episodes, but they really called to something in them. And now that it is out, we when we had him on, he told me and Sam some special information. And uh, Corey, <laughs> he told us what the the um, adult male following for the uh, Lyra show were going to be called, and it was in there. The homies are here. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Uh, so, um, oh, it, I love it. It was amazing. Um, I cannot, the next, uh, season cannot come out fast enough. And he already gave us the titles of every chapter in the second volume. And they looked fun. Awesome. Um, also, this is a new pick, uh, I've been reading, it's because it's new. The Main Six Discover Human Music by Blissy One. That's right, the author has a 255 HP base stat. That's right, I won't put that joke. All right, I should write that down. So the idea, obviously, is that they find this weird signal. Celestia has identified like a weird signal in one part of space, and they made something to translate it into Equestrian, and it's basically a radio. And so they, the main six listen to human music. Uh, the first chapter was just a one-shot, but it got was so popular it had to get another one. Um, I won't say what either of them are, but I will just say this about the second song, the, what the update was. What? Particle Man, what? If you got the, he might be Giants reference. Good for you. Uh, or they might be Giants, that's it. And, Sam, you need to listen closely to this. Okay. My Little Insano Madness is Magic by L.D. Socrates has updated. Oh, hey, that's the one that I still need to read. Oh, but here's why you need to read it even more. Sorry, I say that as though there's only one that I still need to read. But, okay, go on. So, this, the newest chapter was about Linkara having landed... Well, there was one chapter about Angry Joe, but no one cares about Angry Joe. So, oh. Linkara having landed in Equestria as a pony now. What? And, and him being found by the great and powerful Trixie. What? And them bonding over their shared... What they have in common. Oh my gosh, they, yes. The problem with the temptation of power, and how it's done... The, made them do bad things, and how they're really trying to make people see them as a good guy again. Has Linkara yet yelled, I am a stallion, and punched someone? No! Dang it. Not yet. Okay, that has but to happen sometime. I really want more. This was like the best chapter ever. It was awesome. Oh man, that's great. And last thing, and this is a cool one, is uh, the Grey Feather Secret by Lysis. If you've heard of Lysis, he was the guy who did uh, In a Tavern Down by the River, that really surprisingly good Trixie fic. 
uh, ship fic thing that I talked about with the... Oh, it was on the show. It's an old episode, Trixie episode, whatever. But so apparently he lives in Sacramento. So I met him at Sac Anime. And we got to talk, and now we're on, we're friends online. And I, I, pro- I read the first chapter, and I count this as an update because I've read the first, the next five chapters that aren't published. And the Great Feather Secret, Sam, this is pretty cool. And actually, you, okay. everyone here, listeners, Claudius, you need to, this is pretty cool. I, it's Daring Do story, where it starts off with Daring Do just being dirty, broken, beaten, no sleep, showing up at this museum with this artifact, this, like, doom artifact thing, and trying to talk to the head museum person who's just skeptical. And in this world, Daring writes the books, but she also does those things. Hmm. Like, she does those adventures, and she writes them as stories. And, you know, she trumps it up a little bit, not, like, a ton. Like, this stuff basically still happened. But, you know, she makes herself seem a little better in them. Uh, She makes it more entertaining for people. Um, and she goes in there, and so everyone's just like, oh, yes, you went on an adventure, sure. And so she's trying to convince this guy that what happened actually happened, and that it was real, and that she needs his help. And in doing so, tells him the story of the Grey Feather secret. And so it's, we're hearing her first-person narration of, well, it's all first-person narration, but I mean, we're hearing her explain the story to him of what happened, while cutting to, while cutting back to frequently, um, him and her, him arguing about how the story is really badly written and doesn't make any sense. <laughs> that and sounds awesome. That is pretty is. interesting. I like that. It's really cool. And what I like is the first, it's, you know, I've read like four chapters. And lot, so for the most, like the story within the story, the story of the Great by the Secret, it isn't about her fighting any deadly foe. She just shows up, she goes to this place in the middle of a uh, blizzard. And it, she almost freezes to death for three chapters. Mm. And wow. it's interesting. And, ah, though at one point I was a little ruffled. Oh. She, she referenced uh, Jack London, and I felt my blood seethe in my veins, and I needed to punch a wall. I will believe leave. to White Fang still being a good book. But you I can, get that. But you can up the fuck shot. Oh. So, um, and speaking of that, it is your turn for updates. Okay, so, wait, because you, you were mentioning, like, Samer guns. so is updates still, is updates time for, like, new, you know, just fix that I read that have to do with Derpy, or updates? Oh, no, these are all updates. These are all updated in the time between. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, um, I looked around a bit, and you know what? The coolest thing ever, my little chrono triggers her magic, still hasn't updated. Pat was supposed to be on this episode, and you could have bugged him, but he's, like, dropped off the face of the earth. Oh, man. You know what? Then tell him that he better have dropped off the face of the earth because he's writing more My Little Chrono because I need my fix. Pav, please. I like that you can interpret that as you need your fix, like you need it, like you need more fan <laughs> fix. You can also take it and your fix. Like, like you just I am going to just play it cool and pretend that I actually meant that. Yeah. I need to put My Little Chrono. You guys syringe. <laughs> Tell me, Pat. Tell me. Oh, great. Pat is dealing now. Uh, Well, anyway, tell him to write more stuff. Because, wait, am I Skype friends with him? Because I need to be so that I can just bug him in person more often. Just search Pat Fiera. There's no other Pat Fieras in the entire world. That is true. I'll just, like, randomly video chat him and just say, make more, and then then just, you know, hang up. So, Claudius, does anything you read update in... Don't worry, guests usually don't have anything. It's okay. No. Well, that's especially true for me because, as I mentioned earlier, I am just really behind on um, on reading uh, 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 fanfics. But um, if it's all right, um, um, I would just like to uh, uh, recommend a couple of my uh, favorite authors. Um, oh, go ahead. Um, like I mentioned, uh, Paleo Prince oh, yeah. earlier. Um, um, he wrote a um, um, a story called uh, uh, "The Three Hooves," hooves with a W, um, yeah. which is um, I think the best um, version of uh, Ditsy Do as the Doctor's companion. Uh, 
I've seen. Um, it, it's just a fantastic story. It works great as a Doctor Who story. It works great as a My Little Pony story. Um, I need to read that one still. I've read uh, Choices and uh, the, the, um, School Days, but I haven't read that one yet. Um, I've read Choices. I'm partway through School Days. The Three Hooves I loved enough that I made him a title sequence for it. Wow. <laughs> um, I don't think it's linked to directly in the uh, story description, but if you search for my username in the comments, you should be able to find a uh, link to it. I had it on YouTube originally. They took it down, then I put it up on Vimeo. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, it's nothing fancy, but it's just that's how much I like that story. Um, I personally don't use um, the Doctor in my own Ditsy Head canon, although I will mention that um, in my personal head canon, Ditsy Doo is an author of self-insert Dr. Hope's fan fiction. Okay, that's awesome. <laughs> um, in fact, if you uh, think, um, yeah, I put a blog post up about it um, a little while ago. So, so if you check my blog on Thin Thick, uh, look in the archives, you'll, uh, um, uh, you'll see something about that. Um, the... Um, next story I write about, uh, I did see do, I was planning on, uh, on working that in. Um, and I've already mentioned, uh, Psychic Scuba Diver and his, uh, Dresden and Jolie's stories and Rainbow Double Dash and the, uh, um, uh, the Lunarverse, which I cannot recommend highly enough. Um, and honestly, there's others, um, 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 actually, two others I do want to mention who, who I want to read more of their stuff. I just have a hard time finding the time to do it. Um, but I I know them on the RPG Net forums, and and they're good people when they write good stuff. There's uh, Strike, spelled with a K, uh, spelled with a Y, or um, S-T-R-Y-K-E, and... Um, n- n- uh, um, I frequently get the letters in the wrong order with this one because it's got one of those weird complex usernames. Um, which was, um, RK Striker JK5. I usually just call him Striker. Um, but, um, uh, those are two people I know from the forums who I follow, even though I'm behind on actually reading their stuff. Um, and they both have Trixie avatars on the forum and similar usernames, so that gets very confusing at times. But um, um, I feel bad if I didn't recommend them. Um, 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 so, but I could just keep going for another hour uh, recommending authors that I think people um, should read. But you know, those are the highlights. All right. Um, I would like to say I was looking at him. Uh, Strike has written a fic that I think is in my folder uh, by Royal Command. That looks awesome. I really want to read that one. Yeah, that is uh, definitely on my uh, 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 to read list. He posted about uh, on the premise and was like, should I write this? Like, yes. <laughs> yes, you Record. absolutely should write it. Uh, that, that, uh, you go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, also, um, RK Striker, JK5. Um, um, also um, has a story, The Elements of Harmony and the Savior of Worlds, which is a crossover between French of His Magic and the original 80s first generation My Little Pony. Oh. Um, uh, it's coming, uh, uh, coming to Equestria. And it, it, it's not just that, it's, it, it's what he refers to as the Hasbroverse. Uh, because G.I. Joe and Transformers also exist in this um, in this world. Um, like, the, the Earth that Megan is coming from, you know, has G.I. Joe and Transformers in it. Um, um, even though they don't feature very prominently in the story, there are, there are all side vignettes about them. Um, but they're, they're part of that world, and... Um, uh, basically, she's been uh, cut off from uh, Ponyland for a long time, and there's a dimensional rift that uh, that happens accidentally that uh, uh, that lets Equestria and Earth come into contact, and um, 
she crosses over again and, uh, and then realizes that that millennia have passed and all the ponies that she knew back in the day were long dead. But in the meantime, pony society has thrived. And um, I haven't read all of it. I'm not up to date on it, but what I have read is quite good. Okay. Oh, definitely sounds interesting. I'm looking at his, uh, he has a lot of good stuff here. This is definitely interesting. Okay, then. So, um, actually, keeping on with you, we'll go reverse now. Are there any specific, like, derpy fix, like, fix, not even fix, derp, fix that are about derpy, but fix in which you're like, man, I like the derpy in here. She's really well written. Is there anything else that you haven't mentioned already? We'll just call um, them derp fix. Derp fix! Any more derp fix? Um. See, there is one other. Um, actually, there, there's one other author. Um, that's all. Um, um, also on um, on fin, uh, Fimfic uh, by the name of of uh, Trinary. Um, pulling up her page right now to make sure I get the uh, title correct. Um, and oh God, she. Uh, <laughs> Uh, she's done even more since I've um, uh, I've last looked. Uh, she did uh, yes, uh, a camping. We will go, which is a story about several of the uh, um, the foals from the show that Cheerily thinks need um, uh, a bit more help uh, being uh, uh, properly socialized. Um, uh, let's see, it was uh, Sweetie Belle, Silver Spoon, Snails, Dinky Doo, Pip Squeak, and Archer. Um, she convinces uh, Rainbow Dash and Big Mac to take them all on a camping trip. Oh gosh! And uh... there isn't a lot of ditzy in the story, but there is so much Dinky, and it's like keep insulin on hand when you Uh-oh. read this story. Um, Trinary's portrayal of Dinky is just so incredibly adorable. I love it to death. Um, and looking at her stories now, I see she has another story that I um, have yet to read. And by the color of the icon, I already have it flagged for uh, for read later. The incredibly cool Godmother of Dinky Do. Oh yeah, I'll be talking about that's a winning verse. Uh, yes, it I'll be is. Talking about the winning verse later. The winning verse. Ah yes. Yeah. That's the, okay. That's the the winning verse is an interesting thing. It but, is. Uh, it is very interesting. But I I love so much how she does both um uh, both uh, Dinky and and Ditsy in her stories. Uh, mm-hmm. It it doesn't line up one to one with my portrayal, but that's fine. Yeah, it's it's her own interpretation. Some elements of my portrayal have have made their way into her stuff, which you know makes me feel awesome. Um, but it's just so cute. Uh, it's like, like, come on, I've got a family history of diabetes. What are you doing to me here? You're trying to yeah. put me in the hospital. Uh, so yeah, um, I I need to get back into reading her stuff so I can get caught up with that. Um, okay. So, what is next on the agenda? Oh, oh I was going to go, Sam, Sam, so Sam, so, like, I, I was trying to make a thing, but never mind. Sam, what, <laughs> go, well, your time. Okay, <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> uh, yes, Roy can words good. Yep, <laughs> I can word all time. Yay. Um, okay, so here's the thing. I have only come across so many derpy fix that actually do a really good job portraying her. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, as, as I mentioned before, or at least where she's, I mean, there are some where I like the, like the derpy, but there is honestly just one in particular that I would like to mention right now. Um, it was actually just very recently posted on film fiction. Oh, um, it was by a writer called not a brony writer. And it's called Rorpy is Best Ship Fake, and it is a ship between Derpy and Roy. Wait, what? <laughs> what? 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 Look it what? up. 
Norby if, is best ship pick. <laughs> if I had countered those words in a forum pick, my reply would be an animated gif of the Tenth Doctor saying, What? <laughs> <laughs> There you go. So just picture that. <laughs> we have indeed finally had a fan fiction written about, well, one of us, at least. Um, wow. So, yeah, that happened. I'm sure that Roy is reading it right now. For the record, of course, if it were played straight, it would probably not make any sense whatsoever. It is meant to be very much a uh, a parody of many things. Wow. But it is, in fact, a story wherein Roy ends up in Equestria and falls in love with Derby. Wow. I'm assuming that Roy is silent, either because he died of some sort of surprise heart attack or something, or is reading it. I'm, no, I'm, not, I'm saving it. I'm saving it. Oh, God, my girlfriend's in the room right now. How is she going to react to this? <laughs> Ask really nicely, maybe for Valentine's Day, she'll put on a blonde wig and a pair of gray wings. <laughs> oh, well. So anyway, yeah, uh, that's a thing, and I figure that that's <laughs> the only story that I need to mention. Um, yeah, that, that exists. Wow. <laughs> yes, it does. It could be worse. It oh, could be ah. far worse. Ah. Oh, someone now. I, okay, I'm really going to hope that this starts a trend and we get a Roy Trixie shit fic. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear it. My head's vibrating in anger right now. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to kill you or anything. I just, you know. Okay. All right. So I can talk. Okay. okay. <laughs> 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 yeah. Retaliation. People need to write ship Sam with Dahlia Hawthorne and the what? balance. No, no, that is nothing. No, why would you? No, 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 no. No, why would you do that? Would do it? Do it? Mm-mm. No. Nope. I will send assassins Sam? or something. No. Sam with Pinkie Pie. No. Well, why not? That, that wouldn't. Well, okay, that wouldn't work out too well. It's all. I don't hate her or anything, but it wouldn't work out. But, but not Dahlia, please. For the love of everything that. Isn't you know, you're just, you're, your pleas are only going to make it strong. That's probably true. I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> okay. Onwards. Onwards. <laughs> so, first thing, Life and Times of a Winning Pony. We just kind of mentioned it. Uh, Derpy is a huge character in that. Um, if you've not heard the description, a lot of the stuff involves the fact that uh, the main character, Cloud Kicker, is kind of in a relationship with her. And I say kind of because... Stop. Um... But I think Derpy is handled very well in that. She is competent. Like, not just competent. She is she's incredibly intelligent, very wise. Um, she's probably one of the most even-headed, most intelligent characters in the entire story. Um, her daughters are... They gave me diabetes, I think. Um, I'm going to have to ask the author to pay for what he did. Um, yeah, just generally speaking, that is, that is a good, I think that's a good interpretation of Derpy. Um, she's also, the only time, that's a great scene, I don't know if, uh, if you've read it, um, uh, Caesar, but there is a scene where they're talking, Cloud Gear's awkwardly trying to talk with Sparkler, and they're kind of dancing around the subject of, uh, of the fact that, you know, she's banging her mom. <laughs> and, and so they're like trying to get around it, and then she's just like, Someone brings up muffins, and she's like, "Oh yeah." Uh, she like she casually mentions at one point, Cloud Kicker actually gets out like the fact that they use muffin as a euphemism, uh, and, <laughs> and Spark of like, "Oh no. now I can never eat muffins again." <laughs> oh man, uh, I I've read a little bit of that fic. I clearly need to read way more. Yes. Oh wow, that uh, and then, that's then awesome. Burger? Only human. Only human. Actually, uh, Derpy is a main character. Uh, she's odd in it, um, and not in the way she usually is. She is the owner of a bakery that makes mm. muffins, oh. and she is Lyra's roommate and best friend, and is basically putting Lyra up for free. And, well, like, in return, Lyra works at the shop occasionally. But, mm-hmm. um, and she has, she's like, she's the best friend who is there to give you a dose of reality to whatever hopes you might have. Instead of go, whoa, whoa, whoa. 
this is not gonna work. <laughs> and um, and vinyl keeps hitting on her, and it's pretty hysterically funny. Oh wow! So I think again that is a unique version of Derpy, and I've never seen that before. And quickly, without spoiling, Fall of Equestria Derpy. Sam, would you want to comment on Derpy and Fall of Equestria and how awesome she is? In Fall of Equestria, Derpy is awesome. Okay. Oh, well, that's okay. Yeah, no, just, I, I, no, I'm sorry. I feel like I can't give away any more without giving away spoilers. I just... Ah, it's okay. called, like everything else about Fall of Equestria, and it is awesome. So, yes. Okay. <laughs> I've been holding this one in for a while. I want to talk about this. Oh, go ahead. You go, Sam, you finish. What? No, I, I don't really have anything to finish, really. I'm just kind of like, ah, Fallout Equestria. I'm geeking out about Fallout Equestria here, is all. Fallout Equestria! So far. <laughs> okay, so. Choices by Polly Prince. We talked about this a little bit earlier, and how awesome it is. Everyone here has read it, actually, I believe. Um, I have. You have, Sam? I, you read it for the show, didn't you? Re- read what, what again? Sorry? Choices, the one with... European College with Lyra. And... No, no. What was what was the title? Choices. Oh, oh choices. Oh, yes. Um, a, a bit of it at least. I don't think I finished it. Oh, you said I, I really oh. wanted to. Well, we'll kill him later, Caesar. Don't worry. I, I want to. It was he well, uh, uh, can't finish the story. Yeah. See, exactly. See, there you go. That's how you do it. So, so what I like about that, what I wanted to bring up, is while I don't think exactly her personality is different, what I really like, the two things I think really work that are different, is it a. The idea that the, that the doctor came to her as a kid and that she's known him since she was just a little filly, and because of that, you know, it's almost a river thing where they meet in the wrong order, yeah. and, and that she's always and it's it's very much played for tragedy and it works really well. Yeah, it, um, it was kind of sad at times, but yeah. it, it was it was very well done sad. I haven't read it yet. Uh, Wow, uh, my girlfriend's reading the fit, that ship pick, and uh, she's, I, I'm not liking what I'm hearing. <laughs> so, other thing, other thing, choices. I like that they're. I, this is so unique. I love it that Derpy's thing, like her weird brain thing, is that she has aphasia. Yes. I love that. Like that's such a random out of left field thing, but it's such a thing that's never touched on. Like of all the weird brain thing, that's one of the ones I never see. No one's ever like, oh, the character has aphasia. I mean, I guess it's kind of hard to write for someone who has aphasia when in mid-sense it's going to go... Actually, no, they'll be like, hamster, toaster, but butter muffin. You're going to go, what? Yeah. I think Paley Prince does a good job with uh, with writing it, though. Um, as an aside on that, um, actually tying into another uh, portrayal of Ditsy, um, there's a bit in uh, The Three Hooves where uh, uh, one of the nonsensical things uh, Ditsy says while her aphasia is, is kicking up. And actually, uh, uh, what's kind of interesting is that her aphasia kicks up when she's stressed out, which yeah. is actually when my speech impediment is at its worst. Um, so I can kind of simpl- sympathize there. Um, uh, but at one point... Um, um, she says, um, I swear for Bald Dumbo Rat. And Bald Dumbo Rat is the username of someone on YouTube who does an absolutely incredible ditzy slash derpy voice. I think she usually calls her oh, derpy. Oh, yes. 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 It's just okay. so incredibly adorable. Bald Dumbo Dr. Rat, if you, Bald Dumbo Rat, if you are listening, there is nothing you could do that would make me happier than to record in your derpy voice, some of the lines of dialogue for my derpy fix. I could die a happy man if you did that. <laughs> Just wanted to get that out there. <laughs> Sam, you edited this? You son of a bitch, you me. I, I what? I did what? <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> One day, one day your joy will turn to ashes in your mouth, and you will know the debt is paid. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Okay. Oh. Uh, two, last two are ones. I'm not going to still just talk about Derpy in it. I'm going to be talking about their full-on Derpy fix that I read for this episode. Mm-hmm. One, Derplicity by Skyrider. Oh, my gosh, this one shot's great. The idea is that Derpy is a changeling. <laughs> and 
It's pure comedy. I'm not going to reveal the twist. I'm just going to reveal that Derpy is hysterically funny in it, and uh, in general, it is really well done, and I love it. Um, everyone, it is just really well done comedy, which is such a somewhat rare and beautiful thing. And the other one is Mother May I by Moabite, which is horribly, horribly depressing. So Sam, you should love it. It is, it's basically Derpy interacting with Dinky. And it's, bas- it's, it's her asking her mom about her eyes. Mm. And it's done in the more... She explains her medical condition to her daughter. And it's done in a more realistic way of what that kind of eye thing means. You know, like, she just can't read. You know, one of she's seeing out both of her eyes, and they're going in different directions. Mm. And, you know, no depth... For, she loses depth perception. She ba- Everything becomes too muddled. She can't really see some of the time. And... It's really, really sad. It is very nice, too. It almost made me cry, but not quite. Um, I'd say it was really good. It was a good one-shot. And that is the Dirt Fix I read. Dirt Fix. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> I will this definitely have to check out Durplicity. Do it. Do it! And with that two-sided note, speaking of two-faced you know, <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> so, anyway, that has been the show for this week. Um, we are uh, in the middle of kind of moving our channel. You'll see more about that in the description for this video, and you'll see what's going on there. But please like our Facebook page. Please follow us on Twitter. Caesar, it has been a joy. Uh, you were a great guest. This has been a fun episode. Indeed, certainly has been a fun experience. All right. Uh, next week. I actually have no idea, so this should be a fun surprise. So then, it has been a great episode. Uh, Bye, everybody. Bye, Internet. Bye.